Hello! Hello, everybody, and welcome to SDVOE Live. This is TV for Pro AV, and I am your host, Justin Kennington. We have a lot of exciting topics, uh, interesting guests lined up for you over the coming months uh, of new episodes. Uh, but today we're going to keep things simple for episode one. We're going to kick it off uh, with just myself and my co-host and trusty sidekick, uh, Matt Dodd, who I'll introduce you to in a moment. Matt heads up education for the SDVOE Alliance, and education is a very important part of our mission. Uh, you are all currently, our live viewers, are logged into the SDVOE Academy, which is a, a key part of, of how we uh, bring training and knowledge to the AV community. So after the show, I encourage you, uh, to browse around the academy and see our nearly 100 courses uh, that are available on topics uh, including of course audio and video uh, but also IT topics and a lot around how those two worlds uh, can be bridged together right and that's a key focus for us here in our very first episode we're going to teach you uh, about a new way to think about uh, converged AV and IT networks right but before we jump to that education segment uh, we have some, some industry news to talk about, uh, and I also have a very special uh, SDVOE Alliance announcement to make uh, for 2021. Uh, you'll be hearing it from me right here on this show uh, for the first time. I also need to mention uh, that after the credits roll on our half hour together here, uh, you'll see me and Matt sit down and relax a little bit, uh, loosen our proverbial ties uh, for our after show. That's going to be a live and interactive event with you, our audience, uh, so starting now, if you have questions for me, questions for Matt that you'd like us to address, look down below me uh, in the chat box on your, very, on your very screen here. Load that up. You can chat with your fellow uh, viewers, uh, and you can fire off questions that will come to me and Matt. And we really want this to be an interactive experience for you, not just a TV show. Uh, so do go ahead uh, and check that out and bring us your questions. This is much more fun for us uh, if we get to interact. So... With that out of the way, and without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Matt, who's waiting for us over in the newsroom. Hi, everybody. Hello, Justin. How are you? Hello, Matt. Good to see you. Thanks for and joining you. us today. Well, thank you. Uh, great set, by the <laughs> way. You've, you've, you've worked really hard. Lovely to see that you've, you've bought these really expensive screens here. They look great. Um, did you run out of money, though, at the point of buying the screens? Or, 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 <laughs> uh, are, they, or are we not fully moved in yet? What's the, what's the score? No, pre pre precisely so, right? You know, you've been involved as anyone uh, in our location scouting. It, it took months to find just the right set for us to put on this, this new kind of TV show. Uh, and then, of course, being AV guys, we blew all the budget on TVs <laughs> and equipment uh, and left nothing for furniture, carpet, paint. Uh, a ceiling, uh, and so on. So sorry about that, Matt. Um, I've got, I've got but I an hope idea, you don't mind though. standing for the show. I've got an idea, Justin. Do you want to hear it? Shoot. So up here we've got the hashtag SDVOE Live. Okay, so there's a hashtag for the for the Twitter for tweets out there. Why don't we ask the audience? Why don't we ask those guys to give us some ideas? To can you tell us the sort of furniture that you'd like to see? Let's give it a go. I've got my trusty. I've got my trusty uh, um, thing here. Uh, what do they call it these days? iPad, and it's giving me all of the uh, all of the, all of your comments are coming in. Or will get through to me here, and we've got the uh, any feedback, any comments throughout the way. Please donate them to us because we'd love to hear what you're thinking. But right now, we just want you to tell us the sort of furniture that you'd like us to put in here because we will we'll do that providing we can afford it. So hashtag SDVOE Live. Tell us what you'd like us to see in here yeah bring those up let's see if we get any new ideas by the end of the show um let's talk about some news matt uh this okay. week i had a couple of of pieces uh both happened to be published by systems contractor news uh good for them that they got both but they really had two pieces that were uh, highly relevant to our topic today uh and i thought that that, that were worth discussing uh the first of these is called optimizing decision making and it sort of analyzed the the state of the art uh, for equipment that's used in, in command and control centers, emergency operations centers, uh, and, and those kinds of systems. Matt, what, what did you see here? What was your takeaway? 
Well, the biggest takeaway for me, Justin, was, was the fact that you know we've been building a lot of video content this year, certainly, uh, based around mission critical uh, use cases. So this, this, uh, this optim optimizing decision making in a mission critical environment, and it's clear that for my takeaway really was that the client is really on board with this now. You know, it's not, it's not so much a case of as, as, as having to go in there to, you know, to, to wax lyrical about this, this great technology that we have. Uh, clients are really aware of, 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 of how this technology can A, be implemented with a really hands-off approach. You know, that's important right now. And we hope you're all safe and well out there, by the way. It's been a, a really weird and horrible year. Uh, but I think we're coping really well. Um, and as, as a result of that, we've had to very much change our strategy and, and, and realign quickly the way we do things. So we've certainly been um, uh, uh, instructed to build a lot of content which, which, uh, which, which is designed around mission critical applications. It's designed around the ability to scale up the flexibility and to scale up the, the, the type of technology that we have without there needing to be lots of people in there and lots of hands on. So yeah, um, yeah really, really interesting article. Um, I also should have, should have mentioned before, those of you watching this with us in SDVOE Academy, look to the right of your screen uh, and you'll see links where you can click and read these articles for yourself uh, after the show, get some context. Um, what I thought was interesting in this one was it specifically called out a need for hybrid AV IT networks, right? The, the, mm -hmm. the way they described it, you know, a, a, an operations center is about individual operators working. It's about them working in teams and it's about the larger team, right? And how these different sizes of groups scale the data that they need. Uh, and, and are able to access it quickly. And that data comes in the form of both audiovisual data and, and other kinds of, of data sets. Uh, and so the concept here of being able to build a hybrid network uh, so that that data comes in and, and flows through the same channels makes it a lot easier for those teams to, to collaborate and to sort of assess uh, these massive data sets and, and get to what's critically important, right? I, personally, I was, I was very happy. Uh, uh, someone quoted in the article mentioned uh, that customers are ultimately best served by software-defined workflows. Uh, so those of us here at the software-defined video over Ethernet Alliance, uh, we're very pleased uh, to hear that assessment, and, and we totally agree, right? That The kind of flexibility uh, that software brings to the AV application uh, is, is really key. Uh, Matt, what was our next piece about? Yeah, the next news topic. Um, things to look out for, right? We love a bit of this in tech, don't we? The pro AV trends to watch out for in 2021. Um, there's a couple of things that stuck out for me, but you know, what, what, what were your takeaways? Uh, well, the number one for me was my, my friend Gabby Shrieky at the HD Base T Alliance uh, mentioning that uh, there is no need for a dedicated AV over IP network. Uh, we totally agree. That's, that's kind of what we wanted to talk about here. You can converge. Uh, AV and IT bring those together uh, and, and get a more effective solution. Well, what okay. did you see here, Matt? There was a lot that went beyond uh, uh, audio, uh, beyond video and AV over IP in this article. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, what I was hoping to see was was um, you know, a bet better furniture, uh, some nice couches and comfortable things to, to put in um, um, studio sets. Um, but we'll call it a trend for 2022. We didn't see that. No, we can't wait till 2022. There's there's some great there's some great thoughts coming in. By the way, keep them coming in. This is good stuff. Uh, one of there's a couple of them I can't possibly inflatable mention. chairs. Perfect, <laughs> anyway. Leah. Thank you. So the, the takeaway. That, sorry, the that take might be in the budget. <laughs> the takeaway. The takeaway for me was touch touch tech to start with. Like I said before, you know the the whole COVID thing. I've said it. I've said the c word. But hey, you know it's the elephant in the room, right? Uh, the COVID thing has, has really made us start to consider and think about how we apply ourselves with you know, touchless technology now. You know, we, 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 we've, we've taken this stuff for granted. I've got one in my hand and I'm touching the keys. And then we hand that to someone else as a control panel for somebody to go into a, a hotel or go into a, an office or wherever it might be. And fingers are going on these, on these, on these panels. So I'm really interested to see what's going to come out from the touchless uh, technology, which you know, kind of takes the the voice activated stuff and the voice recognition stuff, and, and makes it better. It is getting better, but it needs to be a whole lot better and more reliable before it can be applied in certain commercial use cases. And Justin, the other thing that that, that kind of really floats my boat, 
apart from inflatable chairs, um, they, 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 they float my boat. Um, but the, the other thing that really excited me was the whole wireless mic technology. You know, when we do these live shows, uh, I'm completely rigged up with, with microphones and I've got boxes attached to me all over the place and, and cables running through my uh, clothes. But that's all well and good. But it's uncomfortable, you know? And um, the whole idea of, you know, we already have bound, boundary mic technology, but it, the, the audio quality isn't good enough to do something like this. So the idea of having wireless t uh, microphone technology, which is away from the body, would be really cool. So uh, that's certainly on my radar. Um, JK, uh, you got, I believe you've got a, a rather special announcement uh, from within the SDVOE camp. Is that correct? I, I do. And, and this is brand new, right? This is the first time we're announcing this uh, uh, publicly, but it's something we've been working on for some time. Uh, in 2021, we'll be launching the SDVOE API developer program. Uh, right? Any of you familiar with SDVOE technology who've been through some of the courseware and academy, maybe you're a certified design partner with us, uh, understand that the API uh, gives us our software-defined flexibility, and it's, it's, it's that thing on which rests our interoperability capabilities. Um, in 2021, we're going to open that API up to any developer uh, who wants access to it. Software developers uh, from the IT world, uh, custom AV programmers from the AV side of the house, you're all going to be invited to come into SDVOE Academy, be trained on how to use this API, uh, and that will give you access to all of the software that you need to develop, all of the documentation, uh, and everything so that you can start building applications on the SDVOE platform. It's really exciting stuff. Uh, JK, can I ask you, uh, why, why, is it, why have we had to wait till now? Why now? Is there, is there a reason specifically why we want to, to get this out now? Shall I ask the same uh, well, question again? Finally, why now? <laughs> <laughs> finally, in the show notes, there's, there's a two-word two question there. Yeah. Why <laughs> finally, use two you know, words when you can use 20? <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've grown to a point where it's time, it's time to start delivering on that promise uh, of software defined. Right? We're now 51 members. Uh, over 500 products built around the SDVOE platform. Um, and I really want this to become, you know, think of what Android is to the smartphone, right? I, I, don't, have, I don't have delusions that we can get that big anytime soon, maybe in a couple of years. Um, but that's, that's essentially a, a, an OS is kind of like an API. Uh, and you have a few manufacturers that build really great hardware for it, but then you have this world of developers who are all bringing their creativity uh, to the platform and delivering really great user experiences. So that's kind of, that's what we want SDVOE to be, is, is sort of the Android uh, of Pro-AV. So you can have lots of applications uh, built upon the hardware that the individual users and installers and designers choose. Okay. And, and who is it for? Who can participate? And more importantly, how can they participate? Uh, anyone. Anyone who's interested can can come and join our program. Uh, we're planning to launch this in 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 total in the summer of 2021, uh, but starting in the very first of the year, we're going to launch the Alpha Developer Program. Um, and that's gonna be the first set of sort of hand-selected individuals uh, who express an interest in this and, and show us some competence and ability. Uh, and we're gonna let you guys, the Alpha Developers, have first access to the training, first ac access to the documentation, and really be sort of involved in an interactive way. Give us feedback. Um, because uh, the feedback that I've gotten as I just interview some of my you know, software programmer friends in AV is that many manufacturers will release an API, uh, but then, and maybe some documentation, but then the support isn't there. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so we're gonna have a, a user forum for users to support one another. Uh, many of the Alliance members will participate in that forum and offer support through that. There are other uh, sort of professional, even paid support channels for it. Uh, but we want our alpha developers uh, to be in there early and to help us craft this into a very successful program. So if you want to participate, just drop an email to info at sdvoe.org uh, and we'll get you everything you need to get started. Fantastic. Thanks, JK. Well, uh, that takes us to the end of the news. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. We certainly did. Uh, don't forget, hashtag SDVOE live. Uh, tell us what you want to see in the studio. Uh, JK, I've got to go and do some educating now, if that's all right. So if you want to go and grab yourself a coffee, uh, and I'll see you shortly. Is that okay? That's time for, this, time for the serious education. I'll step out of the way.
Okay, that's got rid of him for a little while. Um, hi guys, and thanks for joining us here at this first show. Um, it, you know, it's, it's going great, as you can see, there's little furniture in here as well. We, we, you know, we, we really did blow the budget on these great big screens, but hey ho, uh, that's the best place to spend it. And keep your, uh, keep your suggestions coming in, because they, uh, they're, they're pretty funny, some of which we can't actually say. Um, so, uh, but, but I'll, I'll be in touch, because we, you know, we'll see if we can do something around it. So, <clears throat> Episode one, a, a new architecture for network convergence. Um, let me just start, in a moment I'm going to roll a video that we have on Academy, but let me just start by saying that we've been using the phrase AV over IP for a long time, right? We, you know, we use it, we coin it a lot. Uh, you know, if you consider AV on an IT network, which kind of, that's what you kind of led to believe really, certainly from my perspective, you think well, AV over IP, AV on a data network. Um, but that looks dramatically different to, to say, IT on an AV network. You know, it's not just a case of uh, just saying it differently. Uh, there's a whole lot more goes into it than that. You know, it, it's not just a mindset change, but it, 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 when it comes to designing the network, we need to think about the way we design the network so that we can accommodate uh, the two things and converge the two things together. And that's what this is all about, right? Uh, a converged network of, of IT and AV living quite comfortable on the same network. Um, and think about it this way as well. Uh, designing is important. I go on about design a lot and, and everybody that I talk to, you know, I'm doing the network training and I go out and, and deliver or do deliver now in this environment in a safe studio set. Um, Design is so important. We can't just turn up with a bunch of kit and sling it onto a network. You know, we've got courses on Academy that talk about how um, AV, on, AV will kill an IT network. And there's a really good reason for that. Um, designing an AV network which takes care of IT. Now, that's a whole different thing because up to now, we've been doing things like putting one network in place for the AV and another network in place for the IT. That's bonkers to network people. Really, we should be designing the AV network to accommodate the IT, and that is true convergence. So how do we do that? Well, let's find out. We hear the term AV over IP used a lot. It's a growing trend within the audiovisual industry. However, AV over IP is often confused with AV over IT, which essentially means a converged network. This course will walk you through the differences between these two very similar phrases before finally introducing you to the concept of IT over AV. Let's begin with AV over IP. This means that we're transporting audio and video, AV, using Internet Protocol, IP, and this uses a network switch. Internet Protocol is a Layer 3 protocol, and a typical IP address looks like this. And when we transport AV, we use a process called multicasting, and this gives each audio and video stream its own IP address, and they look like this. Check out the multicasting course here on Academy to learn more about how this works. AV over IP exists in many forms already, but that doesn't automatically mean that these AV over IP solutions can just be sent over any IT data network. Remember, data networks are primarily designed for data transport, not AV transport. So just dumping our AV solutions onto an existing data network is not a great approach. We'll come back to this. AV over IT is the ability to transmit audio and video signals over an IT network designed for data. This concept only works for very highly compressed AV such as H.264 or HEVC. And it's these codecs that bring you YouTube or Netflix to your mobile phone. Because this data is so highly compressed, it makes its bandwidth requirement very low. And IT people love that because it doesn't interfere too much with their data bandwidth. It's high latency data, and that's easy to route over an existing IT network. This is the only exception though, because the reality is that most other AV will kill your IT network. 
MJPEG codecs can consume over 900 megabits per second, and that spells the end for any one gig data network. AV over IP does not mean that you can simply put AV on an existing IT network, because it will probably kill it. When IT networks are designed, they're usually oversubscribed. This means that the peak amount of data which might be used will exceed the bandwidth available on the network, often by up to 20 times, and this is called a blocking network. Let's look at an example. A 1 gig Ethernet switch with 48 ports can support a full 1 gig of bandwidth, incoming and outgoing, on all 48 ports simultaneously. The total bandwidth capacity of that switch is 48 times 1 gigabit times 2 in and out. That's 96 gigabits, and the switch is said to be non-blocking. However, it is common to connect this to another switch just using four 1 gigabit links, and this creates an 8 gigabit bottleneck between the switches, giving an oversubscription ratio of 12 to 1. If we tried to send all of the possible data the first switch could support, we would lose almost 90% of that data inside the bottleneck. When an AV network is designed, the peak bandwidth requirements must always be sustained, because video always consumes high bandwidth whenever it's in use, unlike an IT network where traffic is very bursty infrequently using high bandwidth. If the video is 500 megabits per second, for example, then 500 megabits per second will be constantly consumed. And this means that the architecture has to be non-blocking, giving all the AV networks a one-to-one -one subscription ratio. Let's look at this a different way. IT over AV means the ability to transmit IT data over an AV network. It achieves the same result of having the convergence between the two systems, but by designing an AV network first, and then placing the IT requirement on top of it, the AV bandwidth is guaranteed. Whatever is left can be used for IT, and this is true convergence. AV won't run out of bandwidth, and nor will IT. Let's look at an example where the 10 gig switch is put in place for the AV network. Whether it's for a 1 gig AV or a 10 gig AV, you still need to use a 10 gig switch. So in this case, you can see we have a 10 gig AV port which gives you all the dedicated AV. But within that, you also have a 1 gig data port which guarantees that you have full 1 gig support. IT over AV means that the data is now riding over the AV network as opposed to the other way around. If it was just AV on an IP network, then this would be a standalone replacement for a matrix switch. If it was AV over an IT network, then the IT network would need to make provision for the AV to ride over it, and as we've already established, this would probably kill the network. Networks designed for traditional IT don't handle AV very well, but networks designed for AV don't have much trouble at all handling a little bit of extra IT traffic. IT over AV is the only way to allow a 1 gig IT network to work perfectly with any AV transport, whether it's a 10 gig SDVoE AV application a 900 megabits per second MJPEG application, or even a 50 megabits per second H.264 application. IT over AV is true convergence, because it eliminates any redundancy which happens with multiple networks in place, and the cost is reduced, because, well, there's only one network instead of two.
So, okay. Thanks for putting that together, Matt. Yeah, no that problem was great. At all. That was great. Just something I threw together. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 to me, it exposes something interesting to is what happens when you start to think of AV uh, as just another application of IT. Mm. Um, and that's not to and that's not to put AV under IT in any way, right? AV and the and the user experiences we create uh, are the important thing. But once you start thinking of it as just another IT application, uh, I think it starts to allow the the AV pros uh, to really focus on user experience and focus on creating great things and not yes. have to worry so much about you know how do we how do we hook up to the matrix switch precisely? Yes, uh, so that's what exactly. I think is interesting about it. Yeah. Uh, we're in the, the home stretch of the show now, Matt. Uh, anything happening on, on Twitter? Well, uh, do we have any uh, feedback yet? What, what kind of couches am I going to have to buy you <laughs> for, your, we, for your precious tush? Just out of interest, what time of the days is going out in, uh, in the US? I think it's probably a bit early for some of these things. Uh, Brad, uh, Bradford, Ben, thanks for that. Uh -oh. Probably won't make the cut just for the moment, but we'll, we'll, we'll be in touch. Uh, we've got inflatable chairs. Um, can, can you, you know, just show me your screen, Matt? So Can you hold it up so I can see it? What this screen? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Brad. We'll talk about that offline. I can't show them that, can I? And there's there's a bigger picture of it. You see that? Oh, hello. That's thank you, Matt. That's enough. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah. So conference tables. That's good. A uh, little bit boring, but hey, it's thanks for the suggestion. Uh, and that came from, from, well, from wouldn't, David. It wouldn't be an AV show without a good conference room, would it? <laughs> you need a conference table, that's for sure. Um, we, we need some carpet. Yeah, definitely had some, some, some big support for carpet. A bar theme, um, which, which kind of cleans up the, oh, hello. <laughs> the suggestion. Well, yeah, 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 you got it. Yeah. Inflatable chairs we've already seen, so thanks for that, Leah. Um, totally need to go for a comfy pubs scene. Now, being a Brit, I'm all for a comfy pub. Uh, so, so absolutely, we're, um, we've got, some, we've got some, some good Twitter. Keep them coming in, please. Keep the Twitter feeds coming in. And by the way, um, also, let's just use this now for our discussion topic for this week. Um, you know, to tell us, based, based on the topic that we, you know, based on the, 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 the whole network convergence thing, have you ever been in this position before with any of your projects? You know, you might have actually been in this situation where you've experienced a converged network without, or you've been putting it in without realizing and since, since today. Uh, have, you, have you been pushed back from converging networks? Give us a tweet, T send, us, send us your comments, send us your feedback, send us your thoughts on this because we'd love to hear. And what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll Justin, we'll, we'll bring this back in next, next, on the next show, right? So we'll just throw in you know, some highlights, some, some, some of the experiences that people have had. Uh, that'd be fantastic. Um, so yeah, yeah. Do please, do please tell us uh, any experiences you might have had. Uh, J.K., where, where can people hashtag, go to get? Sorry, go hashtag on. Hashtag SDVOE live. And and if you missed anything in this show, if you want to repeat it, uh, don't feel bad. If you looked away, uh, because this show and all of our following episodes will be posted to our archive right here on mm -hmm. SDVOE Academy, uh, as well as on the SDVOE Alliance YouTube channel. So please, if you enjoyed the show, tell your friends, send them here to, to watch the reruns. Uh, and, and both of you be here again in the same spot on <laughs> December 15th, where we'll, where we'll be featuring episode two. Uh, our topic will be, what is a network anyway? We all think we know what that means. Some of us do know what a network is, uh, and some of us don't. So come back uh, and learn a little bit about that. I hope you had fun today. Stay tuned for the after show, please, but I'm going to go and get that coffee that he just made me. So thanks again. Take care and bye-bye. Bye-bye.